Hi, it's Rob Moore here, and thought I'd do, it's gonna to have to be a quick video this morning because the cement mixer has just blocked me in and it's gonna be gone in a minute, on building assets versus spending and wasting time. So most people are spending their time to have some kind of wage or some kind of income, and then if they stop spending or wasting that time, then there's no income. So an asset is something that produces recurring income once it's set without you having to exchange your time for it. Now, that, that may not be any new news to you. So here are some few things that I think might help you build more assets. So number one is you want to work on things, especially your time, and then ideally the, the time of your best staff or team members or partners. You want to spend your time on something that's gonna have the longest tail, i.e. the longest amount of weeks, months, or years worth of residual your benefit. So if you have the, the choice between earning a good hourly wage or building an asset which might not pay you now but could pay you for years and years and years, I would uh, urge you and advise you to spend more of the time on the asset. Now of course if you're not making any money at all you have to balance assets and building assets versus exchanging time for money to pay your mortgage and your overheads and I get that. But let me give you loads of examples so I think this will help. So um, I like writing books. And um, I've written, I think, nine now, uh, maybe 10 with the next one coming out, but nine, 10, who's counting? Uh, and uh, in the early days, I used to write the books. And of course, for weeks or months when you're writing the book, there's no income. No one's paying you to write your book unless you're like a massive um, kind of fiction published author. So no one was paying me. And this was, this, you know, sometimes it could take three months to write a book. But once that book is published, it's an asset because it goes on portals like Amazon, Audible if there's the audio version, and you know all the other different aggregated uh, websites. And people can buy that book for months or years. So you know you're having you're setting to then forget. You're creating ongoing residual income and leverage. Now a lot of people are so busy that they don't feel they've got the time to invest in building this asset because they need the money now. But that's often a mistake because then for the weeks, months and years ahead, they have no recurring residual income. So then though, I made a mistake. And that mistake was I was writing books that lasted six months or a year because my early books in property, you know, there were the mortgage interest rates in it. You know, there was inflation in it. There were all the uh, specific detailed tax strategies that worked at the time. And in six months to a year, they've all gone out of date. So that's no longer an asset. So it didn't have a long enough tail. So when I wrote Life Leverage, okay, there's probably a few things that might go out of date in three or five years. Um, but I tried my best to make it relevant in 10 years time. Try the best to do that with my podcast, make them relevant now, but make them relevant in 10 or 20 years time. So that the time that you invest now that you're not immediately getting paid for, uh, you're paid over and over years and years and maybe decades. So if you think about, um, Think and Grow Rich, what is it now? It must be nearly 100 years old. I think it was in the 30s or the 40s, or maybe even the 20s, it was written at least 80 years ago. And that is still in the top, what, six? In Audible, in business, it must still sell hundreds of thousands or millions of copies a year. So that is a great example of an asset with a very long tail. If you think about property, so I don't know if I can, I'm going the wrong way. Anyway, I don't need to show you a property for you to know what property is. Um, but you know, like um, this, ha this house here was built in 1880. And uh, um, there's a lot of noise going on back here, sorry. Uh, and uh, it's now 2017 and that thing is still an asset. And in fact, I'm just building an extension and doing loads of work to it uh, to increase its value again. So for 140 years, that thing has been an asset. You know, it's been going up and up in value. Um, in 1880, it was probably about 200 pounds to buy. And, um, you know, now it might be, I don't know, it might be eight, it might be seven figures, who knows? So that's another example of an asset. So invest in property and keep them for a long time. So my podcast is an asset because no one pays me my time to record the podcast. And my audio books are an asset. No one pays me up front to record my own audio, audio books. But I choose to do them because, you know, there should be a long tail. So my, um, some of my property audio books, they've been on Audible for five years. Life Leverage has been out 14 months. It's been in, 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 on Audible in 14 months. It's often still in the top 10 in business 14 months later. So every month I get a check from uh, Audible for quite a few thousand quid for something I did 
it was actually probably did about 20 months ago because I finished it obviously before it got published. Uh, my podcasts, I mean, now some people get um, ads on their podcast. I don't like ads on my podcast. There's no sort of paid ads or anything like that. But someone who's got a, a good podcast, they build an audience, they build a following. It's an asset, then they can have advertising on their podcast and they can earn £10,000 or £50,000 an episode if they've got this massive reach. So that's an asset. A Christmas number one or a song or an album is an asset. A license is an asset. A franchise is an asset. So let's summarise this. Stop thinking about spending your time, even if it's a good wage, and start thinking about building building all these assets and in the end in three or five years time if you build these assets and they're they're there and they're hosted and they're managed and they're maintained and they're on portals that have great reach and leverage and um, they bring customers to you then you have not just you know quite a lot of properties but you have multiple streams in multiple different niches and facets uh, and you have assets across the board uh, and then you have true passive income and you can work a lot less and earn a lot more. So I hope you found that useful. It looks like these amendments are going to let me out now. Uh, remember, if you don't risk anything, you risk everything.